Welcome to Fluent and Chill. I'm Fluent. He's chill. And we got a lot to talk about today. How you doing, Jay? In effect, man. In effect, football. This this might be, Tone, this might be some of the best playoff football that I've ever seen. I hope it continues. Because normally, the first few rounds are eh. And yeah. as we get further, right, we build up. And then the Super Bowl, a lot of times the Super Bowl is disappointing, let's be honest. But the, this round is mm-hmm. typically the good one. So far, we've had a lot of really good matchups, a lot of really fun games to watch. Something for everybody. We've had defensive games. We've had offensive games, right? So there's there's something for – I had someone say, oh, I really didn't like that Green Bay-San Francisco game. It's so defensive. I like that. I like that. And then others said, hey, the Bills Bills and Chiefs, back and forth. You know, who's basically who's going to have the ball last is going to win, which is exactly what happened. Kind of like what you expect, though. You 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 expect certain teams to win, so it's not. It's really a whole hum in a, in a wild card and then in a divisional. It's it might be a good game, but it's who you expect to win. Only except this is this has been completely different. The teams that we expected to win haven't won. So I mean, both number one seeds are um, out, and that's out. been I think like ten years since that's happened. Yeah, absolutely. So this is awesome, man. This is this is really good. We're going to take, and we're going to get to that. We're going to make our picks. We're going to make our picks. Mm-hmm. We're also going to do, right after we make our picks, we're going to do mail drop, where we take your questions. That's oh. the, how, we're, how we always oh. end the show, is with your questions. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about all-star voting, mm-hmm. NBA all-star voting, because I have a big issue with it. I want to obviously hear your take as well. But oh, first, I've got a huge issue with it. Huge, huge issue got with it. Absolutely. Issue. Got a big problem with this. But first, I'm going to call on my good friend. I've never met him. My good friend, Elon Musk. <laughs> J- or maybe Branson, I think. I think Branson has one, too. I jump in their spaceship. Mm-hmm. And we're going we're gonna to go off planet for a minute. Because we forgot. Well, we got busy. We got our, our, our show ran long last week because we always want to do once a week. We promise you conspiracy. And last week on Wednesday's episode, so I'm going back a week and a half. I promised you that we would talk about how there never really was a man on the moon. I promised that, and we didn't deliver it on Wednesday. And I thought, eh, no one will notice. You guys paid attention. You all noticed. So thank you for paying attention. Thank you for subscribing, setting your reminders. The fact that I got messages, plural, I thought you were talking about the man on the moon. Well, then let's do that. So as with all our conspiracies, I'm going to tell you kind of the for, the against, and then we'll have a nice little discussion. So the for is, well, we all saw it on TV. They put Neil Armstrong and... Those, you know, Buzz Aldrin, they put him in into a spaceship and they shot him up to the moon and they had a, one big step for man and a giant step for mankind and they planted their flag. There you go. What more evidence do you need? You said you didn't believe Wilt's 100 because there was no video tone. There's a video. There it is. The against, however. And I'm only going to give you a couple of bullet points because I have more on top of this. I don't want to. I don't want to give it all away right at the beginning. The against is, well, it was it was done on, yeah, there was video. They did it on a sound stage. And they just, they, they shot it on a sound stage. They didn't actually get to the moon. They couldn't get there anyways. And, and the big one I hear is, well, look at the way the flag. Every other shadow goes this way. Look at the shadow of the flag. It goes that way. Dun, dun, dun. That's what my eight-year-old does. She goes, dun, dun, dun. Uh-oh. So that's, that's the case against is that right. they, they believe they actually didn't get there they filmed it and because of the shadows what say you you're a historian i know it's american history that you well, focused in but no, i guess the, i guess the moon landing is american history well the first problem that i have with that is they actually went to the moon again so it was so that means that we got to stage it again no, we well I, it- I think there, let's let's focus on the conspiracy is the first one was fake okay yeah, just let's do the. I've never heard about any other ones. Yeah, just the right. first one. So, so, so we'll basically stick to the first one. All right. So the four, the against would be, you know, the moon is two hundred and forty-eight thousand miles away from the planet, right? So it takes like three or four days to get there. So unless you're should, unless you're Tariq Hill, he probably gets it about three and a half. I was thinking more like two days. <laughs> two days. Yeah, yeah, three, I was thinking more like two days with him. So <laughs> for. I mean, that's a long time, and it's a lot of planning to do something like that, right? And 
we have to get this right the first time. This isn't a do-over. So this is right. a situation where, you know, we can get this wrong and then I right, will try again. No. You, you're not trying to throw a ping pong ball into a cup and be like, oh, I missed. Oh, I'll do it again. No, you, you can't do that. You can't do that. Time. You have to get this right the first time. So, but the four, I, so I can appreciate the against, but the four, I mean, why would we stage something like this? This is a, this is a huge deal. Not only is it a huge deal, it was all over the world. And it was a huge competition on who was going to get to the moon first, the Russians or the Americans. So there was a lot of planning that went into this. In fact, there was a movie that was made called Hidden Figures about Black women, about Black women who put the numbers together, who there was a whole team. Taji. Yes, she was in She was, yeah, Tarot Shaw. She was good in that. She was good. Absolutely. There was a whole, there was a whole movement behind putting this thing together to get to be the first ones to get to the moon. So the idea that this didn't happen or well, this is a conspiracy, no, I'm not buying it. Okay. So it's interesting because you made my point for me. Uh-oh. There was a race. There was a competition with the Russians, the Cold War. The first country that got there was going to be considered the dominant in space travel. Mm-hmm. And the first ones to get there it would, you know, it would show their, like I said, their dominance in the world. Mm-hmm. Could the Americans allow the Russians to get there first? Mm-hmm. No. When they realized they couldn't get there, what did they do? They went to a sound stage, and they filmed it. Because what happened right after that? The Russians kind of stopped. No, stop. Try- I don't want to say completely stop trying, but it changed. Just think about this: if the Russians get there first. Mm-hmm. Well, now they're beating their chests. The Cold War maybe goes in a different direction. The Americans had to do something. Mm-hmm. You've had now some people say who were involved in it was, well, yeah, that's it is true. We didn't actually get there that time. I brought up the shadows. How do you explain the shadows? Why are the shadows going in different directions? We all know, like, look, Look at the light. The shadow goes this way. If you saw a shadow going that way, you, you'd be... Now I've got two lights. Maybe that's a little different. But if I were to turn off this light and just use this one, all the shadows should go this way. Like the sun, that's just the way it is. Correct. Now someone will say, well, hold on. When I'm standing and I'm walking down the street, if the sun's you know high noon, you might see shadows going in two different directions. Eh, don't be a smart... You know what? Um, but, so there's, 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 there's enough question marks and reasons for it that this is this is something that i think will continue i don't think this is one that'll go away because you ask certain people and people have said who were involved in it no we staged it other people said no i was there um i i i, I want to say it was buzz aldrin said maybe said it didn't actually happen it was one of the guys on the on the show i don't know if it's dementia or if it's trying to sell some books i well i think it was i probably i think it was just to to needle at people because there's no way you think it was like tongue tongue in cheek absolutely yeah we actually stayed. yeah yeah i never got to the moon that was all a lie we, we, one we of those no um, yeah. well the fact that you mentioned tone there's video evidence of this well it was a sound stage what kind of sound stage is going on in 1968 that 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 looks like that. So I mean, I, I don't. It was it, even though it was it was modern at the time. It takes a lot of planning. Yeah, back then you still saw the strings holding up Superman yeah. when he was flying. So fair enough. Give me a break, man. Okay. <laughs> so so the four is hey we got video evidence. The against is hey there's people who've said it was fake. It was honest answers, and it was to beat the Russians. So the motive is there. The motive is there. Right. So now we're a judge and jury. Um, your vote is. Real or they, fake? They went to the moon. Mine, as always is. No, I'm just kidding. This one, I'm with you. I, <laughs> I think they landed on the moon. I think they landed on the moon. We're not going to agree on a lot of these conspiracies, but on this one, we do agree. Right. So if you have a conspiracy or you have thoughts on this one, mm-hmm. please put them in the comments. Send them to us. We'd love to read about them and talk about them on our next show. We're going to recap. And every week, like I said, we do three shows, a Monday live on TikTok and then two YouTube shows. Each week we'll have one conspiracy. Um, it might be sports. It might not. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's come back down to earth. Although I actually think maybe a lot of the people heads are in the clouds. Mm-hmm. When I say this, they might be, they might be astronauts because all-star voting 
the starters are going to be announced on Thursday night. So as you're reading this, you're probably already know who the star, or as you're watching this, excuse me, or listening on Spotify exclusively, you probably already know who the starters are. But here's where we are with the latest, the latest voting, the mm-hmm. third, the third fan returns. Let's start with the West. We'll go to the East. Or should I tell you my problem with this first? Let's start with the, let's get the players out of the way. All right, let's get the players out of the way. So right now, so right now in the front court, your top five mm-hmm. are LeBron James, Nikola Jokic, Andrew Wiggins, Paul George, Anthony Davis. Okay. The guards, Steph Curry, John Morant, Luka Doncic, Clay Thompson, Devin Booker. Mm-hmm. In the East, you have Kevin Durant, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Joel Embiid, mm-hmm. Jason Tatum, Jimmy Butler. The guards, DeMar DeRozan, Trey Young, mm-hmm. Zach Levine, James Harden, LaMelo Ball. Mm-hmm. So those are, the, those are the top five. If you keep going down the list, there's, there's, some, there's, some, there's some question marks. But here's my problem. How is Andrew Wiggins an all-star starter? Well, number one, he's playing on I, – I actually, when I think about Andrew Wiggins, I think it's long overdue. We'll start there. The fact that he's been in the league for eight years, and in the eight years that he's been in the league, the number one overall pick in the draft, zero all-star appearances, not one. And the fact that he's actually – get he's on a better team than when he was in Minnesota. He's in a bigger market. And he's playing better. He's actually playing a lot better than what he was when he was in Minnesota. Even though in Minnesota he was 20 a game, his game is completely different. And he's getting more notoriety. Because, Tone, what you got to accept? The, you you got to Are you taking him? Are you taking him over Cat, Gobert, Ayton? As a starter? As a starter. I'm not going to take him specifically. But the fans do. And, Tone, you got to accept the fact that this is what this is what this is about. This is about the fans. Okay. That's what the, that's what the All-Star game or All-Star weekend was designed for. It was about the fans. What do you guys want? Okay. I'm going to throw out some names to you. And these guys are all in the top 10 in their respective categories. Paul George, mm-hmm. Anthony Davis, mm-hmm. Carmelo Anthony, Clay Thompson, Russell Westbrook. Kyrie Irving. I'll stop there. Mm-hmm. You think any of those people are deserving, or is it just a popularity contest? That's what the idea is, Tone. It's a popular. So, yeah. but here's my thing. Here's my here's my issue. So now we let I, this is perfect for me to. My issue is this: we use all stars, not me, but people use all stars as a level of kind of debate they say oh well he's been a 10-time all-star mm-hmm. but if if being an all-star is just a popularity contest then it has nothing to do with merit the fact that clay thompson has played i don't know seven games is averaging 14 points a game mm-hmm. he shouldn't be on here Kyrie, Kyrie, at the time when the first ballots came out i don't think he even played one game mm-hmm. and now he's and now he only plays on the road right. is he is he should he even be in this all-star conversation? Russell uh, Westbrook. Yeah, I'll give Westbrook. I'll say Westbrook is fine. Um, but the, Carmelo Anthony? Should, Car- should Carmelo Anthony be in the all-star conversation? <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, Tone. To all of those guys that you mentioned, think about the markets that they play in. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware. Because we don't hear about as good as De'Aaron Fox, is, De'Aaron Fox is playing. We don't hear about him being on the all-star. Yeah, ballot, not at all. Right? We don't hear about uh, Deontay Murray being on the all-star ballot. We don't hear about Miles Bridges being on the all-star ballot. Derrick Rose is on here. Right. And and a lot, a lot of that, a, a lot of that is popularity. I can appreciate that because it's for the fans. However, there is some merit to being an all-star. That's just for the starters. But you still got to get voted on. Like as a reserve, you get voted on by the coaches. So, so let me ask you this. That's a br- perfect. And what I, like, I what I want to do is say, if you're going to give merit mm-hmm. to this, like when you and I have a conversation and you say, 
we talk about this player and we say, you know, he's a three-time champion. He's a 10-time all-star. He's been an all-defensive team. He's been all, right? That's how we talk about when we're talking about their accolades. Mm -hmm. What if we change that narrative to he was a, you know, five-time NBA. Now, we can't go back and do it because we're changing the rules, but like I'm talking 20 years from now, he was a 10-time NBA starter. And what that means, because now it's going to mean something, is that's what the coaches and players vote on. And the Mm -hmm. fans get to vote in their reserves so they can see their favorite players. Mm-hmm. But the starters are picked based on merit by coaches and players and, and GMs, what whoever. Right. Now, with that being said, Tone, even today. Because because when people watch less, if 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 the if the fan if the players and coaches and you know who GMs let's say pick the starters, would they watch less? I think they would, Tone. And really? The why, and the reason why I think that they would is because you're involving me as a fan. Like I have an input that yeah, you get all I the can- reserves. All right. There's I more can, reserves I, than starters. But I can vote Grant Hill on as a starter. That's a big deal for me. I could vote Kobe Bryant in as a starter. I want to see Kobe Bryant. I want to see... You will. That. He'll be I, a reserve. No, I want to see Zach Levine as a starter. Now, I will tell you this, Tone. The rules have been changed where I believe that fans have 25% of the vote in terms of, of starters. And I think the coaches... So, so it's not... It, it used to be primarily fans. Whoever it, whoever it is that you guys want to see... That's who we're gonna put on, and we had guys like. Yeah, I remember back. What? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I remember nineteen, nineteen ninety. I want to say six, maybe five. B.J. Armstrong, no offense, is an all-star starter. Was it 94? 94. 94. All-star starter. Come on, they were just they were just clicking off a Chicago Bulls guard because they were used to voting for Jordan for the past Wait ten years. Minute, How about Magic starting in an all-star game? He played the entire season. <laughs> he didn't play the entire season, and he there started. You go. Game. So they I, I can appreciate the logic of them taking out some of the fan input, but we can't take out all of the fan input strictly because that's what I, also weekend is about. How, I wasn't trying to take it all away. Yes, you do. So you want to completely you, you have a problem with not only do you have a problem with the all star starters now. No, I want to give them all the reserves. I'll let now, the fans vote them 100 percent in. And now you want to question, OK, you're an all star. So you're, you're an eight time all star. You got voted in by the fans and wait a minute. So hang on for a second. Yes. That's what the all-star weekend is about. But Tone, so we should be- stop using all-stars as a level of measurement. Then no. how many all-star appearances? No, because being an all-star. Because you just said Magic Johnson didn't even play and he was an all-star. But so now did- we're, we're adding in a year of him saying, oh, he was right. a 10-time all-star. He didn't even play that season. He didn't play that season. However, what we're talking about here is we're talking about all-star weekend being about the fans. But... Being an all-star has some merit because I am voted on as one of the, not just voted on as a starter, I'm voted in with the coaches as a reserve. That means I'm one of the better players in the game. That's not to say that they just putting me on because, well, we got 12 guys and you got to make this roster. No. Well, listen. Andrew Andrew Wiggins, for example. Andrew Andrew, Should Andrew Wiggins be an all-star starter? I don't know if he should be a starter. Right. So I, if he's a reserve, if he's I a reserve because no he's in a big market and he's playing, he still gets the credit. He'll, they'll still say no he problem. was an all star. I got no problem with him being an all star. I don't know about a starter, right? Just because, like I don't know that Clay Thompson should be. Clay Thompson all-star shouldn't all-star. be there. No, no Clay should. Thompson shouldn't even be on the all star team because uh-huh. we're. Er, th- that's my point is because you're, see, you're refusing to take it away from the conversation of great players. And you have guys like Clay who historically have been all-stars right Mm -hmm. they're popular he's popular he's not playing at an all-star level this year he's not playing at any level tony just got back in the lineup when we have debates and we say well lebron james won a championship without having an all-star teammate hakeem olajuwon and michael jordan have won two uh nba championships without having any all-star teammates man there's scotty Pippen was still on that team clyde drexler was still on that second rockets team Yes, LeBron still had, you know, Kyrie and Kevin Love and whoever. Just because they weren't all stars that season, what well, doesn't mean that they were gone completely. Now, in some cases, they were, but um, you know what I'm saying? It's just like I just I feel like we use it as a level of measurement, and I don't know that we should. So maybe that's my problem. Maybe maybe that's my problem is that we use it as a level of measurement. Look, I love it. it's like therapy. This show is like therapy. I get to get it all out, and maybe I find my own path. Maybe we just take it out of the conversation because it's not really warranted in those debates. No, Tone, because we have, first of all, you have to be, rec- that's a part of your greatness. You have to be recognized as an all-star. Now, as an all-star starter, as an all-star starter, that's something completely different. 
like you just mentioned, we could say uh, Andrew Wiggins is a 10-time All-Star starter as opposed to uh, Anthony Davis is an eight-time All-Star. Now, it's completely different because... Well, but that doesn't hold any merit now because it was fan voted in in certain cases, right? So you just have to say All-Star in general. Right, and... Understand, Tony, that when you are being, understand when you are an all-star, I'm still the best of the best. Now, I don't hold being an all-star as high as I hold being an all-league defender. I don't right. hold being an all-star as high as I hold being an all-NBA performer. I don't hold it in that regard, but it does matter that you are an all-star because I am the best of the best. Now, what, what I have to make sure that we mention, Tony, is we're talking about if you're a one-time all-star or a two-time all-star, I might scoff at that. But when you're doing it seven, eight, nine years, that matters. Okay, but you brought okay, interesting that you brought up all, you know, all NBA teams, all defensive mm-hmm. teams. But those are a crock too. Because no, those no. are voted. Yeah, they are, because they're voted by the media. And the media votes based on who they like. And historic, you know, they give lifetime achievement awards. A player misses 55 games and still makes the all defensive team. How? How? When you only play Scotty Pippen, 1997, 98, one of those years. Missed 55 games and he's an all. How? How do you play 25, 27 games and you're, you play that much better than everybody else defense, those 27 games? That's a load. Of, you know how else I know the media? No offense. It's a load of crack. It's a load. Of, ooh, I, almost, I almost cussed. You know how I know it's a load of crap? I will, I will cuss. I'll say crap. So what? It's our show. We can say crap. We can say crap. Mm-hmm. Because Barry Bonds, Roger Clubbins, and Pete Rose aren't in the Baseball Hall of Fame. That's I how no, I know it's a load of crap. I have no respect for the Baseball Hall of Well, these are the same – not the same guys. I get no, it. But, but it's – It's, it's not right? the same. And here's um, – and now I'm going outside of – so, oh, I'm really – to hold on. I need to take a breath. Because now I'm going to get heated because the Pro Bowl, as an, another example, mm-hmm. is also a crock because the two teams that are in the, in the Super Bowl, which should have – more pro bowlers than most other teams, right? Because they're in the Super Bowl. They don't play. But they don't play. So then now they got to bring in reserves. So now I get to say, oh, I was a pro bowler. I don't say I was a pro bowl reserve because, you know, because uh, Patrick Mahomes uh, was playing in the Super Bowl, so he wasn't at the pro bowl. So now I became a pro bowler. See, so that's why, like I say, I just, it's for the fans, what the players right. event. Just let's right. let's stop using it as a level of measurement of greatness. Unless, you know what, maybe I'll give in and say, unless to your point, okay, you're a 15-time All-Star. Fine. The, the, Fine. All, the All-Star part, does not I don't have a problem with it. I just don't hold it in as, I don't hold it as high as I do things like being an All-League fair. performer. Fair. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Being an All-League defender. That's fair. I'm okay. I'm okay. Because here, and look, and look <laughs> you're not totally wrong. Like, you know, what, you, when I picked my West All-Stars, I said I would have James, Jokic, mm-hmm. and Kat. Right. And so they've got James Jokic and Wiggins, you know, cat, I think at eight, I think it's a little low to be honest. Mm-hmm. My, my guards were Steph and Ja, I, and they got Steph and Ja. So, I and you, Curry. who did you, you had, I had Curry and Paul, Curry and Paul, you know, mm-hmm. Paul's at seven. Mm-hmm. I don't think people give, I've been a Paul kind of realist. I don't think people are giving Paul enough credit for what he's doing with that Phoenix team again this year, but he got to be, he got to be in the MVP conversation. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. We will. You're absolutely, we, we are um, in the, in the East. I had Durant, Giannis and Embiid. They have the same three. <laughs> Maybe I'm proving my point wrong yeah, here. You mentioned that. Hold on. For, hold on for a second tone because KD is out. So who's going to replace KD? Who's going to replace KD? Hmm. Who is going to replace KD? Well, in voting, it would be Tatum. Mm-hmm. It would be, okay, here's the list below the, what's left. Tatum, Butler, Allen, Jared mm-hmm. Allen, Pascal Siakam, Bam, Miles Bridges, LaMarcus Aldridge. No. LaMarcus Aldridge? No. LaMarcus Aldridge? He shouldn't no. be there. No. Who, so who do, you, who do you replace KD with? Tatum. Tatum. Yeah, I think he's the best player. I, I, I'll give you that. Maybe, but, maybe Butler. Maybe Butler's. Uh, maybe Butler. I think uh, maybe Butler. Butler's on a better team. Right. And that's part that's of it. That's part of it. That's the difference right there. Butler's on a better team, but I think that Jason Tatum is more popular than Butler. Yeah. I think why yeah. He's- well, and that's why he's leading him in, vote- in, in voting. So it probably will be him. And then the guards, I had DeMar and Trey. They have DeMar and Trey. So, mm. okay. But on- you know what, fans? You're right. You, you've picked an excellent team. <laughs> 
I, I was wrong with that because I, I actually I had Lamelo starting, and you and I had this conversation. You did have Lamelo. That's right. Yes, I had, I had Lamelo starting over Trey, so I was wrong with that. I still think he's going to make the All Star team. Yeah, I, I, he's fifth. He's fifth yeah. in voting, mm-hmm. and I think, yeah, I think he makes it. Like it's hit, it's still- it's Demar, Trey, Zach, James Harden, mm-hmm. and Lamelo. Yep. So I had him start. I had I had Lamelo starting in the All Star game, but I was wrong about that, which is fine because when I it's still a really good team. It's still a really good. It's still a really good starting five. So I, I got no problem with that. But at the end, Tone, what I'd like to do is I'd like to I'd like to keep the fans involved. I don't want to diminish being an all star. I, I don't want to do that. I just don't hold it in as a high regard. And at some point, we're gonna talk about this again about how Tone thinks that the All NBA in the All League Defender team is a crock. We're, we're going to talk about, about we're going to talk about that next week. Yes, sir. So we just for the record, for this week, for this week, what I've said is that the Hall of Fame's a joke, All Star voting's a joke, uh, and all the overtime rules need to change. Yeah, just minor things. I think I just need to revamp all the sports. Just send me a list. I'll change work it out. I'll, I'll work it out and send you. Change, all right. Clock, change the dimensions on the court. Let's get rid of all of that stuff. <laughs> now we're going to go to a game that I'm, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to change anything right now except for their overtime rules. But People want to know who's going to make it to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So we need, to, we need to talk about it. We're going to start in the AFC because your team, congratulations, because your team's still in it. So I'm going to mm-hmm. save that for last. You've got the Cincinnati Bengals who beat the Chiefs earlier in the season, 34-31. They kept Tariq Hill, Travis Kelsey in check, traveling to Kansas City to play the Chiefs who are a different team. Then we saw like week eight, week nine, when we didn't think they were going to be making the playoffs. Not the same team. Either. Much different team right now. Um, Ingram started to show a little. I know Chris Jones is really the probably their best defensive player, but we we got to see about the the honey badger there, Matthew. See if he's still going to be be playing. I think he was out with a concussion. Um, but Ingram too is starting to play pay some dividends for the Chiefs defense as well. Mm-hmm. Kind of tell me what what are your thoughts, Chiefs and Bengals. Oh, I'll tell you what, Tone, when we saw them in week eight, week nine, and you and I had this conversation, I was not sold on Kansas City. Not ma- I, was, I was not sold on Kansas City making the playoffs. I thought they were out. I think they were three and five at that point, uh, four and f- something like that. And I'm looking at the division that they were in and the fact that the, not only going up and down, they looked like they were going the other way. Patrick Mahomes wasn't playing great. Travis Kelsey was just – that offense was sputtering. Yeah. A lot of and turnovers. That, and that defense was completely and utterly whack, to yeah. say the least. So I didn't think that they were going in there. What happened was that they turned around that offense. And in, in addition to turning around that offense, the defense turned around. Honey Badger got better, right? Sorensen started playing better. That D-line got way better than what I thought that they were going to be. And they just went on a run. And I was really I was really surprised about what they did just in the division alone. And you know this better than I do, Tone. In the playoffs, not just in the playoffs, just at the end of the regular season, if you get hot and you get in the playoffs – Anything could happen. So I'm looking at this group and I'm looking at how Kansas City is rolling. And I don't like the, I don't, I don't like it one bit tone how they're protecting Joe Burrow. You said, you mean not, you mean not protecting Joe Burrow? Let let me rephrase that. How they're not protecting Joe Burrow. We're talking about a guy who he ended up on his back officially nine times. He got knocked down like 12 or 13 times. Let's make sure I play on that. He got knocked down like 12 or 13 times. And that pass rush, for Kansas City is so much better than what it was when they saw them in week eight. And I think that that's going to be the difference in the game because what they're going to do is I think they can force Joe Burrow, who I love, by the way, and who I I love. I love Cincinnati, and I think that they're one of the best young teams. But I think that with that pass rush, they can force Joe Burrow into a lot more mistakes than Tennessee was doing. So you're you're obviously then picking the Chiefs to win this one. I think that the Chiefs win. I think that the Chiefs win. I think it's a really safe pick. To pick the Chiefs, they're they've been the best team in the AFC. Now this is their third year. They've this is you know they've been to two straight Super Bowls. This is their fourth straight AFC Championship game. Which, by the way, you know I keep telling everybody to pump the brakes. I'm putting Patrick Mahomes in you know into the top five quarterbacks all time. I keep telling them to pump the brakes on that. But I got to tell you, in five years and four as a starter. To put up 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns, 4,000 yards, 37 touchdowns, go to the AFC Championship all four years as a starter, man, he's well on his way. 
he's he's well on H- his way. Hence the tone, hence the term tone on his way. On his way. Oh, that's why I used it. That's why I used okay. it. On his he's, way. Yeah. He is he's well on his way. So that that it might be the best start. And this is why people get fooled, right? It's the best start, you know, the any quarterback ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's but guess what? I learned a I learned this. There's this great line. Uh, do you remember that movie Roadhouse? Patrick Swayze. Um, I forget Sam Elliott. I grew my hair because of Sam Elliott, just so you know. Uh, because in that movie, he, like puts it up right before he's about to fight. So there's this great line, Sam Elliott and Patrick Swayze, and I forget the girl's name, but the doctor. Um, they're sitting at a diner and um they've been up all night, right? They were at the bar, now they're at this diner, this all 24 hour diner, and they're sitting there and they're having they're eating breakfast. Patrick Swayze sitting kind of in the chair. And Sam Elliott is dancing with the girl and, and Patrick Swayze stretches and yawns. Right. And he goes, yep. He's good out of the gate. Not much for stamina. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good if you come out the gate fast, but you got to, you got to finish strong too. So I, we still got to see the finish, but in terms of coming out of the starting blocks, yeah, you might not, might not be anybody better. Tone. Uh, let, let, let me, let me say that. I think that they're going to force Joe Burrow into a lot of mistakes. And I think that pass rush could, could, could cause a lot of problems for Joe Burrow. However, I've been rolling with Cincinnati all You're changing year. your pick? I've been rolling with Cincinnati all year, and I'm not getting off the bandwagon now. I'm not. Cincinnati's going to the bowl game. Uh, but I was uh, – Cincinnati is going to the bowl game, so I've been with them since we first started doing this. I've been rolling with them. All right. You didn't let me make my bowl. You stole my thunder, so you know what then? Then I'm going to take the safe pick. Okay. And I'm going to go with the team. I was telling you all the things they did right, and then I was going to tell you what they did wrong. I was going to pick the Bengals. But since you picked the Bengals, you're going to be wrong. I'm, I'm going to get them right this time. I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm going to go with what's going to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. And they're going to be playing one of these two teams. Either your San Francisco 49ers. Or my, I'm, they're my Los Angeles Rams now because one, I lived in LA and I'm jumping on that bandwagon because I've been knocking Matthew Stafford for 13 years. I've been telling you, he's horrible. So you know what? He's proved me wrong. I'm with Matthew Stafford. I'm so, where's the camera? Matthew, I'm sorry that I ever doubted you, my man. You, Sean McVay, Cooper Cup, OBJ. L- ladies and gentlemen, this is the same dude right here that, that, that we talked to. This is the same dude that's been telling me for months, the girl that I'm dating, she ain't for you. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to take us out to dinner. That's what he wants to do now. No, no. More realistic is I've been telling you that she's not good for you. She's a cheater, and you break up with her, and now I'm going to date her. What? <laughs> how, how terrible is that? <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Can you believe this guy over here, right? Can you believe him? Now, let's so I'm gonna, so let me make let me make my case why I'm going to take oh, the Rams. Listen. Why I'm going to take the Rams. I'm going to take the Rams because, one, I feel like Tampa Bay set this really cool precedent last year by hosting a Super Bowl. And I think LA's – I think it, I think it's – I think we're going to see a trend. I think we're going to see more teams kind of when they're hosting the Super Bowl kind of use that as motivation to get there. Yeah. I think their defense is really strong, obviously. Vaughn Miller, Aaron Donald, although – you know, Jalen Ramsey, everyone, every time I bring up Jalen Ramsey, everyone wants to bring up, well, Mike Evans scored a touchdown on him. Yeah, of course. Of course he did. Just like any sport, when you're great and Mike Evans is great, please don't get that confused. You're going to score. You're going to get beat at some point. That's just reality. So I think their defense is strong. I think Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay, and I'll say this again, Sean McVay has put Matthew Stafford in a position where he, he doesn't have to take too many big chances. Mm-hmm. And I think that OBJ and Cooper Cup are playing are playing the best football that we might ever see them play. Mm. And the fact that they're getting even a little bit of a running game, which helps those play action and, and keep the defense honest. I think, I think it's just, it's a lot for San Francisco. San Francisco has been inconsistent this year. We said we didn't want to see them in the playoffs and no, and, and it's proof. Ask the Packers and uh, what was the first round matchup? I forget, but um, who they play in the first round? Who they play in the wild card? San Francisco, uh, Dallas. Um, ask Dallas and Green Bay, right? You didn't want to meet San Francisco in the playoffs. I just think when I compare quarterbacks, I got Stafford over Garoppolo. When I can, when I compare defenses, I got the Rams 
over the 49ers by a hair. So that's that's why I'm just I'm leaning to that side a, a little bit. Mm-hmm. I know you're picking the 49ers, obviously. Tell us why you're picking the 49ers. Matthew Stafford, for that reason and that reason only. Matthew Stafford, man, you trying to sell me Matthew Stafford. And the mm-hmm. idea that and, and it's actually believable. He's played like, well. Last last game, especially 380 something yards, no, no interceptions. Just so you know, folks. He's actually doing a really good job at selling it, only except he gave me the pen. He put the contract in front of me. I'm not signing it. And the reason why I'm not signing it, I thought Sean McVay, who's a rah-rah guy, I thought he did a really good job of putting Matthew Stafford in positions where he can be successful. 38 passes. I got no problem with him throwing the ball 38 times. The difference in that game was turnovers. They did everything that they could to give the ball back. That they did. And the game back to, to Tampa Bay. Now, I think that I think that the 49ers defense is better than Tampa Bay's defense, which means that those mistakes that they made, I think that the 49ers can make even I think that the 49ers can cause even more crucial mistakes for Tampa. Can I ask you a question on that? Because mm-hmm. I don't I don't disagree with that. I think the San Francisco uh, 49ers defense is better than the Bucks. However, do you think a Garoppolo led offense could take advantage of those mistakes as well as a Tom Brady led offense can? Absolutely, I do. And the reason why I feel like this is because I feel like what Shanahan does, I want you to remember, Tone, two years ago in the NFC Championship game against against Green Bay, Garoppolo only threw the ball, counter Tone, eight times. That was it. Eight times. And Shanahan is one of those guys who, whatever is working, this is what we're doing. We're not going to go away from what's not, we're not going to go away from what's working. And I look at that pass rush for the Rams. I think that they're going to get worn out. And why are they going to get worn out? Because I think that the 49ers are going to hold on to the ball longer. And if you hold on to the ball longer and you keep the defense on the field longer, you wear them down. So once you get into the meat and potatoes of the game, the middle of the third quarter, late in the third quarter, early in the fourth, you start to see that pass rush start to slow down. And when I see Aaron Donald, who's been the most neutralized against the 49ers as he's been against any other team this season, he's been neutralized the most against the 49ers. I think that they've done a really good job against him. I mean, I, and, and, and Tony, I did hear a lot about, you know, Jalen Ramsey. He gave up that touchdown to Mike Evans. Just so you know, before he gave up that touchdown, Mike Evans was seven catches for like 47 yards. They had him, but they had him pretty bottled up. He wasn't really doing much. He, he gave up that big play. I think that was for, for 47, I mean, 55 yards. But until up until that point, yeah, yeah, they, had check. Him pretty, they had him pretty bottled up. So with that being said, I think that the 49ers caused more turnovers and they called, they, they put Matthew Stafford in more precarious situations to make him make more mistakes. And I think the, because, because I think, because he hasn't thrown an interception the whole playoffs. There we go. Even though he led the league Mm -hmm. in interceptions this year, people forget that in the season he had, he led the league in interception. He hasn't thrown one. Is this where he catches up? If I'm not mistaken, Tom just said to me, I'm telling you, you know, she's really nice. She's, I I, I was, she's terrible. And then he stopped. Listen, Matthew she's not Stafford. listen, just because she's not right for you doesn't mean she's not right for me. Matthew Stafford. <laughs> I'm told you know who I am. I'm what you call it. I'm you, you ever seen the movie uh Warriors with Warriors? Yeah, come, come out of that's, that's who Matthew Stafford is. Hey Matt, we're looking for you. Where are you? <laughs> but he's coming, Tone. He's coming. Just don't. To, to it is. It is. Listen, there's there, there's uh, there's always two scenarios. It's hey, they've turned a corner and they do one thing, or it's they're gonna get their revenge. It'll is. it'll even out. It'll even there, out. There he is. Yeah. So just give it a minute. We know who Matthew Stafford so is. So you're th- you're thinking three games, zero interceptions, or th- yeah, three games, zero, two interceptions, zero. Sorry, two games, zero interceptions. This is the one where he throws five, so that his average still is like one point seven per. <laughs> I won't go to five, Tony. Okay, not five. Okay. What, but, but what I will say is, Matthew, where are you? Because okay. we know you're in there. Come on out, brother. All right. So you've got a 49ers Bengals mm-hmm. Super Bowl. I got a Rams and Chiefs Super Bowl. But I'll mm-hmm. say this, and I don't always say this. I would be excited to watch Rams, Chiefs, Rams, Bengals, 49ers, Chiefs, 49ers, Bengals. I think all four scenarios are good games Mm -hmm. and that's rare normally you're like oh i don't want to see those like i don't want to see those two teams play but i think everyone has a really interesting dynamic Mm -hmm. um to the matchup so 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 we'll see all right now it's time for mail 
All right, here we go. I'm going to rapid fire some questions. <clears throat> Let's go through them. We've got some NBA. We've got some NFL. We're going to start. Well, I like always starting with these, with the fire them questions. Should Quinn Snyder get fired? Tone, I think so. And the reason why I think so is not because he's not a bad coach. I feel like when I look at Quinn Snyder, I rewind the clock and I go back to Doug Collins with the Bulls. And he took them to the Eastern Conference Championship in 89. This is as far as we're going with Doug Collins. As good as Doug Collins is, we're not going any further with Doug Collins. With the system that we have, this isn't going to work. Bring in, bring in Phil Jackson, virtually with the same unit, they win the NBA championship. Two years later, fast forward the clock to 1999. The Los Angeles Lakers have Dale Harris. That core is still there. Shaq, Kobe, Robert Ory, Derek Fisher, uh, Glenn Rice. That core is there. We've gone as far as we're going to go with Dale Harris. Enter Phil Jackson. They win the NBA championship. I feel like we're the same. I feel like we're in the same position with Quinn Snyder. I watched him last year in, in the playoffs. And I watched the little adjustments that he didn't make. So, for example, when they were going, uh, when the Clippers were going five out, and to have Rudy Gobert having to cover 22, 23 feet away from the basket, that's a coaching issue. I mean, that's a coaching adjustment that needs to be made. Get Rudy off the floor. Because somebody- everybody said he was exposed. but Right. Get, get Rudy off the floor and get somebody. That's a coaching adjustment that needs to be made. I think that they've gone as far as they're going to go with him, Tone, and I think that a, a change needs to, be, needs to be made at the top. And do you think that that there's someone that they could bring in? To, let's say they fire him today. You think mm-hmm. there's a coach they could bring in that changes Utah's outlook for the rest of the season, or is this something they should wait to the off season and do? Because listen, I don't know if you remember this. Two weeks ago, I said Ja coming back now looks really good for Memphis. They might be going up into that fourth seed. I, and I said, oh, they might even be able to catch Utah for the mm-hmm. three seed. And you said, no, I don't think they're going to catch Utah. They jumped right over Utah like they were standing still. <laughs> right Absolutely. I don't think that. A do you, season- so do you think a coaching change? I guess the question is, do you think a coaching change mm-hmm. changes the outcome of this season? I do, Tony, it's because I'm looking at, I don't want to waste another season. I mean, last year they went, they were the number one seed. Yeah. Right? And not only were they the number one seed, I mean, they got bounced in six games against the Clippers. To bring in another guy who I think is perfect, not, not, not perfect, but to bring yeah, no, guy- nobody's perfect. I don't think anybody's perfect, but to bring in another guy to just change the mindset, not just defensively. Like a different voice, a different... Yeah, yeah. just a different voice and a different system to bring in, to, to set these guys in a different direction, I think would help. I, I really think that it would 50 help. games in. There's only 32 games left, and that's what if it were to happen today. Is that enough time to bring in a new system? I mean, let's That's see. my only concern. If I'm not mistaken, uh, let's see. So you, you said 50 games. So in 2015, the 14-15 season, 41 games into the season, the Cavs let go of Black and brought in Ty Lue. So we right around that, we, we, we they were 30 and they were 30 and 11 when they brought in when they brought in Black. And they but were, didn't. But that t- that team, I feel like that team had a player that was really good. They did. He, he, he the real James, I think his name is something James. Yeah, something James. James. Uh, so the who, who was kind of coaching that team. <laughs> really let's be honest <laughs> this isn't the, no feds utah is not that team no, not. um so yeah 30 30 games would be tough I, I see what you're saying i hear what you're saying i do like but i you know that's something where it's after last season what i saw in the playoffs 20 games in and i'm seeing and i'm seeing the same i'm like okay now i'm making a change i think at 50 games i think it's too i think it's too late i think it's too late but but then maybe the thought process is, so now I'm going to flip over to, to your side. Well, the way things are going, we're going to be facing Dallas in the first round. Well, uh, we could be. Right? I think we could be. If, if, well, the way we're playing, I'm not too sure. Right. If I do make it out of that, man, then I got Phoenix. I'm probably not getting by that. And then I'm going to got Golden State or Memphis. Like the, the matchups just don't seem... So maybe it is. Hey, let's take a chance because I don't think I'm getting out of the first or second round anyways. Mm-hmm. So maybe, maybe that's maybe that's the philosophy. And it's, hey, I'll get these guys, you know, some experience with this new coach. And then they can see what the plan is, have a full offseason together. Mm-hmm. And, and, off, and, and that coach also gets to see them play in the playoffs and say, okay, here's, here's some of the players I think we should move on from because 
what I saw from them doesn't jive with the way that I want to coach. So maybe, maybe that is all right. All right. Maybe Quinn Snyder. Sorry, Quinn. Um, we're going to stick. Let's stick to, in the, to the NBA. I'm going to skip this one and I'm going to go to this one because it's a big, it's a better question. The NBA MVP. We're hearing the usual suspects, um, although one of them is hurt now, but we're hearing, you know, the Kevin Durant's, the Giannis Antetokounmpo, Joel Embiid, um, all, all, all forwards in the East, by the way. Joker, yeah, Curry. Curry's the, the talk about Curry has dropped off because he hasn't been playing well as of late. Mm-hmm. So the question, I, I guess I should ask the question, um, who should be we who should we be looking at as NBA MVP right now that we're not? Well, before I even answer that question of who we should be looking at, let's eliminate some people, Tone. So I think Jaws out. Well, wait a minute, he had 41 left. He had he had 41 left two nights ago. So why are we eliminating him? Well, he did miss 11 games, so that's almost a month before the season started, when the season started. In the process of him missing 11 games, Tone, they went 9-11 and 11 when he was out. So no, they, that, won, they won 9 of 11. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 not, they didn't yeah, go 9. Yeah, they went 9-2. and 9-2, two. Nine and two, they yeah. Won, they won 9 of 11. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. I'm sorry. They won 9 of 11 games when he was out, when he was out the lineup. That doesn't help your case. Your no. team is winning when you're out the lineup. In fact, that's what sunk Embiid last year. When he missed 10 games, not only did he miss 10 games, they won seven of the 10. He was out the lineup. Otherwise, he wins the league MVP. So I think Jaws out. As good as Jaws been playing and as good as Memphis has been, that's a damn good team. But yeah, they're really good out the lineup. So I think Jaws out. That's number one. Number two, Embiid is great as Embiid. We're talking about a guy 13 out of 14 games. He's had 30 again. He's had 30. And I think he's averaging 30 and 10 over the last like 20 games or something like that. That's great. Problem is they're in fifth place in the Eastern Conference. All right. And with them being in fifth place, what is the criteria tone for what for? Okay. Yeah. At minimum, you have to have home court advantage in the first round. At minimum. You, you, you have to be hosting a playoff series. You have to be. And they're not. Now, does that mean that, that Joel is out? And no, I don't think he's out, but he's 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 not very high in the conversation. As great as he's been playing. That's the same idea with Joker. Same idea with Joker. As good as as good as Joker's Correct. been playing, he might be the most skilled big man in the game. But as good as he's playing, I think. Denver is number six yeah. in the in the West. Now, and if you were to if you were to vote Joel Embiid or Joker, what you're doing is you're setting a precedent that now can't be turned back because you did the same thing with Russ when he won the league MVP, right? So with that being said, and, and did, let me and let me just say because people bring up like Jaws stats compared to the the, the Derrick Rose stats, mm-hmm. um, and and yeah, they're similar to Derrick Rose. But there, that year, Derrick Rose had those that Bulls team. Let's, let's be honest, that was not a great Bulls team without him. They're the number one seed. Number one. They're the number one seed. So, you know, and I also say you can't compare it to other years because, yeah, it was similar to Derrick Rose's stats. But when you look at the players this year, he's competing against for the MVP. Where there's, a lot, there's a number of players that have better stats. Mm-hmm. So, so I just want to bring that, that part up. Yes, but go, go ahead. I think, yeah, Utah's – no, sorry, not Utah. Excuse me, Dallas. I, oh my goodness, Denver. Denver is the sixth seed. Yes, yeah, you were. I, I was going to go through every team in the West till I got and to. What you do, and what you do, Tone, is you, when you when you make that when you set that precedent, this, you do the same thing that you did with Russ. So now yeah. we got to every year, and now we changing the criteria. And you don't. I don't. I'm not sure if you want to do that. Yeah, so I don't want to go down that path. KD is out. Why is KD out? KD's going to miss two months. So yeah. KD missing two months, he's out. He's out. So I think the league MVP is Giannis's league MVP to lose. DeMar DeRozan is out too because I, uh, Chicago has lost seven of their last 10. They're decimated by injuries and they're going the other way. I still think that they're going to be hosting the playoff series when they get everybody back in the lineup, but they're going the other way. So I think this is Giannis's, I think this is Giannis's league MVP to lose. Three out of four years, Giannis. That would be impressive. It'd be very impressive. Um, but I, I think, I, I, you know, it's interesting for, they're the defending champs. Mm-hmm. And I know we're talking MVP, but I feel like they're going to like, they're a, now, they're in my opinion, they're almost like a sneaky pick to repeat. Can you believe that? Because people aren't really, they're not really talking about the Bucks, and they're just doing their business. They're just going about, because they had that slow start because of injuries and everyone just kind of forgot about them. Who's in better position to win? That's right? Like, they like, game at a first place in the East. One game. Who's in, a, who's in a better position to win than probably the league MVP who happen to be the defending champs who have everybody except PJ Tucker kind of back mm-hmm. 
I, I think people are forgetting about that. You want, you know, so who who aren't we talking about though in, in the MVP race that we probably should be in the conversation? Who should we be talking about? Yeah. Right? Like, should we be talking about Chris Paul? Should we be yes. talking about? Absolutely, we should be talking about Chris Paul and that's Donovan Mitchell. I don't know. I'm not going to say Donovan Mitchell. I'm absolutely going to say Chris Paul. Okay, first of all, first of all, Tone. Uh, last night they won. I think they 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 just won their 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 second eight straight. This is their second eight straight. They got an 18 game winning streak, and then this and, and yesterday they're now on an eight. They get eight game winning streak. So we're not even talking about how Phoenix is rolling with with DeAndre Ayton out the lineup. And the reason why they're rolling primarily is because of Chris Paul. He leads the league in assists. He's second in the league, I think, in steals. And the fact that we're not talking about him in the MVP race nearly as much. I, I completely left him out. And we should absolutely be talking about him more. And I apologize for that. Absolutely, we should be talking about Chris Paul more in the league MVP race, no doubt. It's so funny because Chris Paul, almost like overnight, went from, in my opinion, one of the most overrated point guards ever. Because when you're calling him, and when I say overrated, let's be clear, I had him, I think, number 11 all time, 12, something like that. And people were calling him the point god. He's a top three. And I'm like, no, he's not, he's not there yet. So he's overrated. He's almost shifted now to underrated because he's taken this Phoenix team and he's moved into my top 10 because of what he's done over the last year and a half and taking the team to the finals, been an MVP caliber player. And now we're not talking about him anymore. I'm like, guys, uh, you were, you were talking too much about him in the beginning. And now when you should be talking about him, you've forgotten, you've forgotten about him because you're seeing these other dynamic players and we fall in love with, you know, jaw going up to the top of the backboard with two hands and blocking it. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But let me, let's be clear. If it's not for Chris Paul, where's Phoenix? Phoenix is the middle of the road to a bottom, bottom playoff. The, team. Let, yeah. let me ask you this question, Tone. I'm glad you brought up Chris Paul. In 2018, when he gets hurt in the Western Conference Finals in Game 6, after that series, how do you feel? And by the way, he had just signed an extension for like 160. How do you feel about Chris Paul? I thought he's really good regular season player. Always seems to get hurt in the playoffs, so I can't I can't trust him. That's mm-hmm. that's you know my I have my trust issues. I can't mm-hmm. trust him, and that's why I had him ranked there because people want to rank players based on their skill, right? Like there's a the question I skipped was is Kyrie Irving a top ten point guard all time, and I skipped it. I'm going to save it for the next for the next show, so we will get to. It. But I, people confuse skill with production. And I keep having this argument. I don't care how skilled you are. I don't care because what matters is if you produce. <clears throat> and I always can, you know, I always talk, make it about team. And people say, you can't do that comparison. I said, I can, because it's the best way to do it. Just because you have the, the best team on paper. If you don't win games, who cares? So just because you have, as you call it a bag, if you can't relate that to production on the court, then I don't care that you have a bag. Because guess what? There's been great players who only do one thing. Kevin Durant is a scorer. We talked about this last show. All he does is score, and you want to make him top 10, but he only does one thing. So do you care about his bag, or do you care about how he produces? Oh, I care about how he produces. So we keep people flip-flop depending on what argument they want to make. All right. We have one more question. So let's let's get to it because we're running out of time. Mm-hmm. Um, we might have to go five days a week, you know, without this. <laughs> <sighs> Jay doesn't pay me enough to go five days a week, just so you know. <laughs> um, all right. What would a Super Bowl mean for OBJ? Odell think, Beckham Jr. I think that it would validate him because when he got to Cleveland, he was one of the best. I, I think before he got to Cleveland, the year before he got to Cleveland, he was on pace with Jerry Rice. He had more yards and more receptions than Jerry Rice at that time. Yeah. So he was... He was basically a, he was basically how we talk about Jamar Chase. That's how we was talking about OBJ, right? So he gets to Cleveland and he goes the other way. So now the idea is, you know, he's not really that good. Maybe we were wrong about him. Only except maybe we weren't. So he gets with a better quarterback and we see what he's doing. And for him to win it, it would just validate the idea that maybe he was what we thought he was four years ago, five years ago, and he just got he just got himself into a better situation. That that's great. What you said was beautiful. It's eloquent. But you know what it's going to mean for him, really? 
Really what it's going to mean? A bag of cash. That's what it's ah. going to mean for him. <laughs> because if he <laughs> wins the Super Bowl, that that kind of, you know, Antonio Brown complained about the prove it contract. Mm-hmm. He goes to a Super Bowl and plays well. Let's, we always have to have that caveat, right? That he like if he drops four passes for zero yards, uh, you know, that, and he's been playing. Well. So he goes to a Super Bowl and wins, and he plays well. Actually, even if he loses, and he plays like if he's like eight catches for like a buck twenty and two touchdowns, someone's backing up a Brinks truck for him. Whatever you want, right? Not even he goes for six catches and seventy yards and a touchdown, right? But he's like because he's been a difference maker. He has been a difference maker. They're gonna back up that truck. Full of cash. That's what it means for him. Because I don't know. For me, legacy is important. I get it. Nah, I'll take the contract. <laughs> the Giants call the Giants are gonna call him back. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah, back. Th- think about the interesting thing about the because because we blame Odell. We blamed Odell ever since he was on that boat. The Giants haven't won any games. Oh, then he goes to Cleveland. It's not Baker's fault. It's OBJ's fault. He's a he's got a bad attitude. What did I say? I told you it's butter. I told you it's butter's fault. It's butter's fault. Sorry. And now he goes to LA. Oh, look at this. Oh, he f- he, he remembered how to catch passes. Kind of old. No. Days. No. Wow. He didn't remember how to catch passes. They started throwing him the ball where he could catch the ball. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think I think all those things you said were great and true. And I'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm poking fun at it a little bit. But right, the reality is what, what he's what it means is a bag of cash and well deserved. A huge bag of cash. <laughs> well deserved. Yeah. All right. So that's it. I we're not moving to five days a week. Not, not yet, anyways. Uh, but you got Wednesdays, Fridays on YouTube. Uh, you can find it at Sports Fluent. You're here. It's just so subscribe and hit the hit the like button. You've made it this far. So do that. If you want to listen like in your car, when you're working now, all those types of things, you go, we're exclusively fluent and chill on Spotify. You can find us. But until, what, what are we doing next? Monday, 8 p.m. live on TikTok. Until then. Take it light. Take it.